of course I forgot to mute my phone hey what's going on everybody this is Kim Q of dailyqtips.com coming at you out of Atlanta Georgia and it is Tuesday afternoon guys a wonderful Tuesday I am so happy got some I wonder when will this little mark go away it's really getting on my nerves anyway um got some really wonderful news today and um super happy about that still on a great great high from the weekend my primary company had their convention here in my hometown so i got to meet so many of you that i see on facebook that i see and um all over social media and we, t we talk pretty frequently like in the groups but we've never met face to face so i took so many pictures that i still haven't even fully uploaded and i'm ex static about it but guys let me tell you something at the convention there was a, a, a question that kept coming up or people kept asking me about um they kind of caught me by surprise and so what's going on Donita what's going on Jennifer Hooks and so people were like oh you're still with the UOP right and I would be like no UOP you guys know is unit of prosperity and um I've been with UOP for a while enjoyed my time with that community of entrepreneurs but um People were sideline asking me um, if I went with UOP to Infinii, and I've never ever said that I did. I never put on my Facebook or anything that I did, but it came to my attention that, what's going on, Brady? Hey, Micah. But it came to my attention at convention this weekend while I was enjoying the TLC atmosphere that many people just automatically assumed because I was so, you know, in, heavily involved with the unit of prosperity that I went over and I just wasn't promoting it on my Facebook page. But that's not the case. I am no longer with the unit of prosperity. I did not go to Infinii, although that's how I originally met the unit of prosperity. So um, I said, you know what? I am not really a fan of doing things like having the same conversation over and over and over again. So I said, you know, let me just address this right quick in my own words so that nobody can have any type of you know confusion or wonder about it what's going on Pam hey Andy Weaver what's going on Kamisha my name twin so he here was the deal guys I started back with the unit of prosperity and DS domination a while ago things were booming for us um, there was a lot of activity there were thousands of people in that group I had a great time at the time I was doing another network marketing company and I was doing uh, e-commerce just on the side because I couldn't always get on the streets. Hey, Teresa Patterson. Hey, Kim. My friend Kim. Hey, Pastor Tracy. Oh my gosh, all my people jumping on. But anyway, guys, I was doing another offline network marketing company and um, my grandmother got very ill and so I couldn't really go on the streets like I wanted to. And so, yeah, I saw this community of entrepreneurs. They were talking about e-commerce and I was like, what? I actually had an, a seasoned eBay account. So when I started doing uh, DS Domination, which is like the parent company of Infinii at that time, um, I had an unlimited account, okay? Lisa Lee, what's going on? Carlos, what's going on? Hey, Joanne, Lisa, um, by the way, my son woke up and said, where's that lady? He thought you were still here at the house. Side note, sorry, y'all. <laughs> anyway, because I misses you, Chica. So here's the deal, guys. Um, I had an unlimited account. Let me tell you guys this. I did the training. I was absolutely enthralled. I was like, this is awesome. And with an unlimited account, I didn't have to go through the PayPal hole or anything like that. So with an unlimited account, I was like, I'm about to be rich. And I will tell you this, I made some good sales. But you know why I made sales? Because I don't, all my screws, they're not tight. I, my, my, my brain thinks in a certain kind of way to where... Um, I don't think about things like most people do. So when they say just copy and paste, I quickly found out it wasn't as easy as just copying and pasting. You have to think about things in a, a different type of way. You have to be a little bit off off your rocker. <laughs> For example, like I was selling this one thing because I purposefully misspelled diamond in the listing. So I spelled it demon instead of diamond. And because most people can't spell, they stumbled upon my listing and bought this item. So you can't just copy and paste. You got to be a little bit cuckoo, cuckoo, and think about things outside of the box so that you can make your listing stand out. So I'm getting back to that. Anyway, I was rocking and rolling. I didn't make a whole bunch of money in it because quite truth be told, guys, you got to put up thousands of listings, thousands of listings, because on average, you'll sell about 10%. Okay. 
Everything is a numbers game. You can you can't shortcut the shortcut. So you have to put up thousands of listings. I had a I think at the most I had about seventy or eighty listings because it's time consuming to do it. It's time consuming to also go ahead and go back to where you sourced the item from before and ship it to the person and follow the tracking and make sure it got there and make sure they're happy and get your feedback. You can't shortcut cut any shortcut, guys. No matter what you do, there's going to be work involved. But I loved it until eBay shut me down. <laughs> Yes, guys, eBay slammed the door on your girl. Shut her down. I had an unlimited account that I'd had for years. And then there was this one pillow at Walmart, guys. There was this one pillow at Walmart. The pillow cost me $10. I was selling it for $30. I was like, yes. And Walmart, with a trifling butt, ran out of the pillow. Do y'all know five of those pillows um, sold in, in 24 hours? And I couldn't fulfill the order. Um, I, it's a long story. Here's the point. When Walmart ran out, my, my unlimited account that I worked for years to create got shut down. And that was the end of my e-commerce retail arbitrage career. Now, can you get your account open back up? No, eBay doesn't care. They are a dictator there. They will shut you down for no reason. You can go on YouTube at any point in time and see people that made a living on eBay for years. And they are like crying like, oh my God, eBay shut me down. And they're not appealing the process. And I, I can't reverse it. Now, some people do what's called getting a stealth account, which is an underground account, which is a, a like black market account. Those are very, very risky. You can pay high money for them. And then there's other things that I heard you can do, like get a router. And, and I said, you know what? Forget about it. I wasn't making enough to warrant doing all of that. So why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this, guys, because I don't, I didn't like this weekend the fact that people thought I had gone over to Infinii and the fact that people had in their head all of these ideas about retail arbitrage that really are not true. So it was kind of ticking me off. Because with TLC, I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all this. Um, I have I'm a bilingual MBA graduate. I don't say that to brag. I just say that to make a point. I have worked numerous industries, and when I got laid off, truth be told, when I got laid off and looking for a job and trying to pay my bills with no income, it was TLC income that saved my butt. It was TLC total life changes income that made it so I could even put gas in my car at times. It was TLC income that made it so that I could survive and not totally be underwater. And is TLC like easy? Yes, but you are hard. All network marketing companies are really easy. All you have to do is talk to people. But the thing that trips me out is that a lot of people that went over to this retail arbitrage company because they were like, "Oh, it's easy. I don't have to talk to people." Let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all something. If you want money, it's people who have the money. And if you study any successful people, especially Millionaire Myron Golden, if people have the money, then you can't get to the money unless you go through the people. So there's not any place or anything that you can do where you won't have to talk to people. Even when I was doing retail arbitrage with uh, DS domination. If that customer's shipment didn't come on time, and trust me, y'all, people are when you buy stuff online, they like, mm, I ordered it two hours ago. It's not here. You like, ma'am. You got to give them the tracking number immediately. You got to be on top of your game. They want to know it right then and there. And so you still would have to, you might get away with emailing some people, but then some people wanted you to call them Tiffany Young, Peggy Malcolm, all my people, Dominic Moore, I finally got to meet you. All my people on here, I appreciate it because guys, I'm not doing this to be, um, I'm not doing this to do anything besides let you, some of you know that it's not as simple as you think. And the fact that you guys had associated me with that, I didn't too much like. Not that I was mad at the people that were asking me about it, because they didn't know, but I didn't even I didn't even know that people just automatically assumed that I went over there. So here is here is what I want to say um about the whole situation. I'm a hundred percent TLC. When people say things like, oh, they don't help you out and they just telling you to get um your auto ship so that you can make money for them that's just ignorance guys because 
you won't get help unless you put yourself out there to get help. If y'all saw my Facebook Live with Philip Birchfield, national director, who has one of the most solid organizations in the company, um, that man poured into me like no other. And it was long before convention. I met Scott Bent long before UOP Alliance. I met so many leaders who are not tied. My check is not tied to theirs long before a TLC convention or anything. You know why? Just because I would do videos and post them in the groups. And there were some leaders who liked my videos and they would reach out to me, not on my Facebook where y'all can see, right? But they would reach out to me in my inbox. I get people reaching out to me on my inbox like, hey, if you need anything, let me know. The reason why some of you don't get people doing that is because they don't know who you are. Because you don't like your voice. You don't like your face. You don't like your hair. You don't like, you need a new camera phone. So you're not recording videos so nobody knows who you are. And if nobody knows who you are, they can't help you because you don't exist. I'm telling you guys from the bottom of my heart, do the, the simple things that are free. Get over yourself. Get over your ego put yourself out there and then you will see people start to reach out and help you and will you get rich overnight will you walk across the stage automatically probably not for a long time you know why because there's a number of skills you've got to develop to get to that point it's you cannot tell anybody oh well I'm doing everything that they're telling me no because there's a there's like main steps but then there's all there's these small steps in between so like for example if you've got to get up and go to work in the morning and somebody say how do you do that you might say I brush my teeth I put on my clothes and I go to work but no there's a lot of little steps in between you brush your teeth you fix your hair you put on your seat belt you walk to the car you open the garage if you break down all those steps you don't list those steps because it's just intuitive but all of those steps are if you don't open the car garage door you're not gonna back out the car if y'all like what is she talking about you know sometimes I ramble but I'm saying there are little steps in between the big steps okay and so you can never escape those steps I don't care what you do now with Infinii and the unit of prosperity uh, they made their decision to go over there and I'm perfectly fine with that but I'm telling you people who think that you can go over there and oh it's no recruiting if it's no recruiting then why are you paying the monthly fee which only benefits you if you recruit other people you can't say, well, I'm paying a monthly fee because I want the education. Because there's education on eBay and Amazon on plenty of other platforms for way cheaper. See, for those of you who don't know your history, when the UOP left Infinii a while back, it was a big blowout. And there were a bunch of leaders who were making big money in that company that told you. They did videos, they did Facebook posts, they did a whole bunch of stuff to let you know, man, y'all don't need this system anyway. Y'all can go over here and get the training for cheap. And then that was even a, a big deal because, and, and then Peggy Mackleman saying DSD is still available. I don't know. I don't know because I haven't been involved with DSD in a long time, but I'll say this. It was a shame when some people forfeited TLC and went over to, to, to DSD thinking it's one way. And they really have um, no idea what they're talking about because you just don't know what you don't know. But I'll tell you this. It's funny to me how a lot of those big leaders, when we did the first run with DSD, they're not in our Finney eye. And y'all don't even know that. You see their checks, you see their images, you see them in videos, but that's from when we were doing DSD. But a lot of those people didn't go over there to Infinity eye. Hmm, I wonder why. I wonder why. Why are you not seeing all the big names that were riding deep, riding hard with the company before? Do you think there's a reason for that? Maybe. Do you think there might be something that you don't know? I think so. I'm just saying. Now, some of you are doing the best that you can do. Uh, Toya Rutherford said things that make you say, hmm. Um, some of you are doing the best that you can do. You work a job. You're also trying to do MLM. And you, you're getting pulled in 50 million directions. You're trying to brand yourself. You're trying to, and, and you should brand yourself. You should brand yourself. Like, I, I, don't get me started on that, okay? But you should brand yourself. But y'all trying to brand yourself. You're trying to do this system. You're trying to do that system. You're trying to do it. You're all over the place. I've been all over the place before, too. <laughs> so I'm not knocking you. But I will tell you this, guys. Um, you got to do your, do your real research, okay? So, like, some some people are involved and I think if you're doing any type of MLM, I'm I, I support you. I'm happy for you. I just think there's a way to do stuff. Um, but I'm all I think you should chase your dreams. But I 
am really, really into studying the profession, entrepreneurship and success and all that good stuff. So to that end, my point is I also subscribe to magazines like Inc. and different things. One of my favorite mag magazines, y'all, is this magazine called Entrepreneur Magazine. And this is the most recent issue. Do, do any of y'all get Entrepreneur Magazine? This magazine right here, I'm going somewhere with this, I promise you. This is the August 2016 edition. And I want y'all to see in the top corner right there where it says, E-commerce gone wild. We try, well, the, the I can't read backwards. The weird underground of Amazon and eBay. Any of y'all saw this issue? Hmm? Do any of y'all get this magazine? Are y'all really students of the industry or y'all just treating it like a lot of so anyway, I, su I suggest if you want to be an entrepreneur that you at least get Entrepreneur Magazine. Or at least go to Barnes & Noble or some place and read it. And then, you know, put it back on the shelf so you don't have to pay for it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's pretty expensive. But anyway, I want to tell y'all about this magazine article. The funny thing is, they did this article that didn't really paint Infinii, which was formerly DSD, in the best light. And, you know, there are always, you know companies magazines and and authors and uh what do you call those people you know those people journalists that are trying to look for the big break so and i study journalism so i don't take everything that's in print for word but i will tell you this when it goes in black and white it's usually not a good sign if it's not in a good light so this article right here is talking about this guy right here who had a successful ad at an agency and he quit um <laughs> dominic moore people don't get it you have to study the industries within the industry y'all if now y'all need to listen that's that's coming from someone who did walk across the stage and i can tell you a whole bunch of stuff that i learned about dominic moore from philip birchfield this weekend but i'm telling y'all you need to be a student of this stuff don't just I, I don't just listen to my company leaders either i listen to leaders all over the industry i get subscriptions about entrepreneurship at whole not just mlm but yeah this is the most recent issue of entrepreneur Mag magazine and they're talking about this company that y'all think is the gravy shame train so this gentleman right here had a very successful ad agency did um he did um ad y'all got the thing and read it long story short he was like i'm tired of this and so he created this product uh it was a cat rug okay it was a cat rug and the product was selling like crazy he put it on amazon and he was like yes and then all of a sudden he noticed his amazon returns went like over 20 percent whereas on his direct website the returns were only at one percent found out that his stuff was being uh retail arbitrage so this man you don't want to piss off certain people so this man fred ruckel he's like um going to get he's trying to crack down on retail arbitrage and he's going to like ebay and amazon him along with some other manufacturers to crack down on it so that basically what's happening is they'll sell a product for amazon for 20 bucks then somebody will come along like when i used to do it right i ain't gonna lie when i used to do it and it's nothing wrong with it it's capitalism but when it starts to hurt people too bad people will fight back eventually and so what is happening is um this man along with some other manufacturers is trying to get eBay and Amazon to crack down on it. And so he actually talks right here. You can see he talks about good old DS domination, right? Let me turn the magazine around. Why am I doing this the hard way? I forgot this is a Facebook Live and I can do that. Um, but he talks about DS domination in here. And he talks about the fact that um, when you're selling, they explain what retail arbitrage and, and um, how it works. And what this says is like, this one seller, he was, um, he had more than 11,000 listings on eBay. 11,000 listings. Now, see, guys, that's what you got to do. You got to list an obscene amount, obscene amount of things to really get to the good stuff. Because on average, about 10% of your sales are going to sell. That That's just, that always holds, holds true. And so, like, the people that were doing it with us before, yeah, they were listing crazy amounts of stuff. They also were outsourcing it, though. We had whole webinars on that, um, and they were good at it. But if you're doing it yourself, what you'll often find is that you can't keep up with that stuff. You Half the time, you, you ha let me tell you something, guys. I was doing dang on 50 listings and I could barely keep up with it because between being a mom and a wife and work, goodness knows if you're working, then to come home and do the tracking and go back and sourcing and go, man, I could, 
I did keep up with it, but I was doing close to 11,000 listeners. So the people that are doing it and really hitting the big bucks, um, they're doing thousands and thousands of listings. It can be done, but just know that you ain't going to do it. You better get on, what do they call it now? I forget the website, but you better get on one of those websites and get somebody from a little foreign country that makes 30 cents, you know, an hour over there so that you can pay them whatever you have to pay them now. And then that's a whole, that's a whole nother class. You can go back and look up some of the old DSD leaders who used to outsource and they'll teach you about it because they were the ones that were doing it. Um, you said who ordered what, what did it come from? Spread spreadsheets everywhere. Oh yeah. Spreadsheets galore. You love you some Microsoft office. Mm hmm. You, uh, so, um, UOP is not a company to meal. UOP is a group of entrepreneurs, but I used to be with them and they went to another company that people assumed that I went with and I'm not with that company. So I'm just clearing the air, just clearing the air. So anyway, what this guy is saying is what was happening was the reason why he's pissed off is because this man right here, what would happen is, and a lot of people are pissed off when the retail arbitragers go to eBay and Amazon and then they get the item and then they sell it sometimes it's it's rare but it's starting to pick up more because as more and more as more and more people use a platform you know then just the numbers are going to go up period so like when we first started in 2013 it was still fairly new so we didn't have I know I didn't have a lot of problems with people saying oh I found it cheaper on Amazon when they did I was like no problem I'll return your money and um you can send it back to me now when they didn't send it back to me they sent it back to Amazon I had to return their money so basically I just did that transaction all for nothing sometimes you lose money when you do that because you'll still get charged the eBay fee. So you got to watch that. But I never argued with people. Why? Because I didn't want them to mess up my rating. If they mess up your rating, oh, it's over. It's over. They will shut you down. And then you have to either go get a stuff down or, you know, I don't know what you do. I never went back. But anyway, the reason why the, the manufacturers are getting mad is when you do those returns, it costs the original person who's selling the item. So he was saying that it would cost, he would lose nineteen fifty, two dollars $2 and, um, what five cents that guy but he's saying the retail arbitrager would make money so that's why he's like oh no i'm not going out like that so he and this other guy this is something you guys hope might i hope none of y'all run into this but something you might want to watch out for i thought it was kind of sort of funny um so he's appealing like ebay and amazon and high tesh was like oh we're good with ebay and amazon they don't care about us um so Hatesh is like, don't worry about it. But there's this other guy who was pissed off too called Wildermuth. Y'all need to go get this article and read it. It's actually kind of funny. I thought this was really funny. Wildermuth sold like, what, some cats or something? Snuggleheads. And so he was selling his snuggleheads. So he said, okay, eBay and Amazon not going to do anything about it. No regulatory agency is going to do anything about it. Well, I'll do something about it. So Wildermuth, he's comical to me. He got the hats. What does it say? Basically, the hats were selling for $27. He went to eBay and bought the hats from all the people who were his hats and selling for more. And then he um, went to Amazon and bought up the price of the hats for $200. <laughs> and so when he bumped up the price to $200, that made it so that the retail arbitrage person went from profit to now either you have two options. That retail arbitrage person either would lose $172 on the sale or they would have to cancel the purchase, which I just told y'all, if you cancel the purchase, it messes up your rating, which means that your account will eventually shut down. So people were literally actually calling him some of the retail arbitragers. It's funny because he said they got, um, he said, I got these frantic calls from the arbitrager saying, please don't do this, uh, says Wildermoth. See, you do have to talk to people, y'all. You do have to. Guess what? People have the money. As long as you want money, you have to talk to people. You can't run from people. So the easiest thing that you better do is just put on your big girl panties and your big boy britches and learn how to talk to people, doggone it. Right? I think so. But I don't know. I don't know. Dominic Moore and, oh, my gosh, Mr. Dexter Scott. He, oh, Mr. Dexter Scott is on here. Oh, he just heard me say big girl panties and big boy britches. My bad. <laughs> but, no, those are people that have uh, money. They'll tell you you have to learn how to talk to people if you really want money. You can't get around it. Okay? So he was saying that he knew what I 
that I was doing, I let out a string of expletives. Why? Because this man is ticked off. And there's more and more people that are ticked off. Y'all really should go get this magazine. It's called Entrepreneur Magazine. If you want to be an entrepreneur, shouldn't you have entrepreneur? Hi, brother, Mr. Dexter Scott. It was so nice seeing you and your beautiful wife. You know, she told you I was, uh, I did my come on somebody when I met her. <laughs> but if you want to be an entrepreneur, guys, you got to get Entrepreneur Magazine. I mean, how can you not have it, right? So that is um, one thing. And then you got somebody down here who was saying that they sold on eBay for years, but her best month brought in $800. $800 is still good. It's better than nothing. But my whole point, guys, is that this is not something like you're just going to get rich off of. There is nothing. Neither is TLC. You got to do the work no matter where you go. She listed 50 items on eBay and she sold two in the past month. What's 10% of 55, right? So she wasn't even, she was a little bit short of the 10%, right? Um, and this was, they did what? How many pages of this article did they do? Quite a few. So they went in and so you got other people that are doing the um, Amazon private inventory, private labeling. But guys, on that private labeling, what's so funny to me is you cannot, if you don't like to pay for auto ships, that's one thing. But usually if you don't like to pay for auto ships, it's only because you ain't making no money. I mean, if you're not making the money to even cover your auto ship, then you really should just stop it. Just get out of the company altogether. Go somewhere, get your mind right. At least make the money to cover your auto ship so that you are not operating in the red. But if you can't afford a $40 a month auto ship, how in tarnation are you going to afford <laughs> to invest $10,000 in inventory to private label some stuff for Amazon? How? See, there was a guy that we had in UOP that did very well at this. His name was Dante Godfrey. Dante Godfrey was going to different places, though, and he's still online, but he was going to, I don't know if he ever went to China, but he was talking about going to China at one time. He would actually go visit his manufacturers, the wholesalers, because that's how intimate this relationship was was you would do it right you y'all talking about oh i don't want to fly to convention or i don't want to do home parties or i don't want to do this man if you if you if this thing pop off like you really say you want to pop off then you're gonna have to fly to another country <laughs> to visit the warehouse to make sure that they're making your product right because if your product is not made right like it's so funny y'all don't want to do the little stuff the little <laughs> the little tiny stuff in business the most basic things like talking to people, giving them a card, giving them a phone call, but you think you're going to private label your own product and then outsource it overseas and float the cost on credit cards until you get them back? Hmm. That's interesting. It's good. Not saying it can't be done, but if you don't have $40 for an auto ship, how are you going to go and target? I don't care if you scan it and it costs $1 and you it says and, and Amazon says you can sell $500. If you don't have $40, then, then how many of those minutes are you going to get? And then you still have to package them up, send them to Amazon and wait for it to sell. Even if it sells very, very quickly, there's still a, a period where you, you are floating the cost. That's what y'all don't understand. And that's why I did not go to Infinii. And anybody who went to Infinii, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying stop talking like you hit the jackpot when you just started last week. And you don't even know what, what's going on. And half the people that are being talked about like, oh, they killed it the first time we did it. They killed it. It was so good. Those people not even in Infinii with you. So you came to a company based on someone else's results when that person is not even having those results anymore and they're not even there. And you didn't even pay attention to that. And it didn't even strike you well, because you didn't know because you weren't with us in the first go round. But it didn't even strike you to say, hmm, why is it? I'm not going to say no names. You can go back and, and look for yourself. Why isn't this person here? Why, why is that person? Um, why? 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 So this weekend when people were asking me about Infinii stuff, and I was like, what the, who you, who you talking to? I am not the person to ask about Infinii. I just, I, I haven't said anything because I didn't feel there was a need to say anything. But this weekend showed me that clearly there is a need to say something. I am no longer with, I am no longer with the unit of prosperity, not because I don't like the group. I still have great friends in the unit of prosperity. I saw a, a lot of them over at the TLC convention this weekend. 
But the unit of prosperity is only in infinia. I am not in infinia. For reasons in this article, which if you are entrepreneur, you should have entrepreneur magazine. Hint, hint, clue, clue. And for other reasons, some of which that I just told you about with my own personal experience um, with the company and other reasons that um, you, know, you guys at least think about. And if you're not recruiting, if, if, if you want to do it and just make a few extra dollars without recruiting, then fine, fine. But then why are you paying a monthly fee, which really only benefits you if you are recruiting? I'm just... I'm just saying. Or if you were told, hey, you don't have to recruit to get in this company, then right now it shouldn't be like, okay, well, I'm going to give you this, and then you're going to you gonna build other two legs. Or I, don't, I don't know because I'm not really sure because I haven't been following it. But somebody asked me about that too. They were like, well, I was, I mean, because people literally came up to me, didn't even ask me if I was in it. They just started talking to me. I was like, three legs? When did TLC get three legs? <laughs> And then I was like, oh, you're talking about Infinia. Why are you talking to me about Infinia? And they were like, oh, because you you in the UOP, so you in the Infinia, right? And they know I am here LC, not Infinia. But yeah, y'all were coming up to me, talking to me about, y'all said I didn't have to recruit. And now y'all saying that if I get people put underneath me, I need to still build the other two legs. I was like, what? So here's my point. If you are in Infinii, find out who is really in Infinii with you <laughs> and get back with that person, your sponsor in Infinii. I promise you, none of you are sponsored by me because I'm not there, just like a whole bunch of other people aren't there for many reasons that if you don't find out now, you'll find out soon. But uh, get back with your sponsor and get them to answer your questions about how it works and how you're making money and how you're not making money. If you're not making money, you, there's some things you're going to have to tweak just like in any business, I promise you. In TLC, you're not going to come over here. And when they say the T sells itself, that's a lie. Nothing sells itself. Some of y'all have been in free programs before. Y'all told me this. Y'all like, I couldn't even get people to sign up in the free program. And I told y'all, I said, if that were me, I wouldn't say that out loud. <laughs> Because that's pitiful. If you can't get somebody to sign up in something that's free. Oh, and by the way, I'm not talking about Vita. I'm not. I have friends in Vita, okay? And, I, and let me speak on that right quick, too. How 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 TLC and Vita people, it's dying down now, and I'm happy about that. But it was it struck me as odd that TLC and Vita people were, were at war. Because I was like, okay, TLC also stands for tender love and care. How can your initials stand for tender love and care? And you'd be like you know, all mad at somebody. And then Vita, y'all's y'all V's is the peace sign. How can you have the peace sign and then be doing like a hex like a like, like a wish you know, like a voodoo curse. You know, we should be tender, loving, secure and, and peaceful. Okay. Right? So I have I'm when I say some people can't get people to sign up on a free program, I'm not talking about Vita. I'm talking about um there were some programs in the past that I guess some of y'all did uh, some online programs and it was actually free to sign up and I don't I don't know exactly how it worked out but some of y'all told me that this was well before Vita even came out um but yeah y'all were like dang I can't get anybody to sign up I well I did this program before and it was free and I couldn't get anybody to sign up in that too and I was just like oh don't tell nobody that that's embarrassing I mean you can't get better than free so Anyway, I've been rambling for way too long. I just wanted to clear up some stuff. Hopefully, y'all now know that I am not in Infinii. I am not in UOP. Not because I don't like the UOP, but just because I don't like Infinii. Um, but I still have friends over at UOP. And um, for those of you who went to Infinii, I hope you make money. For those of you who stayed in um, TLC, I hope, I hope you make money. But anywhere you go, there your bond is. <laughs> so you still got to put in the work you still got to learn how to be a professional you still got to learn how to be about your business right you still got to be about your business and don't let anybody make fun of you if you're doing a slow build don't let anybody try to make you doubt so long as you are seeing growth just like i had my team come for the convention had lisa lee on the train come down had candace Boardman brown ashley and all these are women that have kids 
They made arrangements for their kids. They came to convention. I looked at my team. They weren't up underneath me. They were taking pictures with everybody. We were having a good time. We got so many things. We were treated like VIPs as volunteers. We had a blast. And after that, after that, we did masterminds. And then I come back and I see... <coughs> I see that um, Candace Boardroom Brown made a package sale, and I, I see so many things going on with my group. Like, they're posting in the private WhatsApp group about so many things. Donnie, what's going on? Oh, my gosh. Donnie Wiggins, y'all, that is my first ever sponsor in life. That got me into Elma. Donnie Wiggins, what's going on? Tell Deja I said, hey, still pretty. She's such a beautiful young lady. Well, she's not young anymore. Is she, Donnie? I don't know. I need to talk to you. Um. Anyway, though. Oh, my gosh. Donnie Wiggins. I'm honored that you came on my Facebook Live. Hmm. But anyway, guys, Um. I just wanted to clear that up because I'm an air clearer. Okay? I'm an air clearer. <laughs> but I don't like anybody thinking I'm associated with stuff that I'm not associated with. If I were, I would tell you. I understood why some of y'all thought I was, but I just wasn't actively promoting it. But I'm not actively promoting it because there's nothing to promote. I am TLC, and I'm not saying TLC, ride or die, or none of that. I am Kim Q. My main thing is TLC. Do I make money other ways? Yes, but nothing like TLC. Um, and one of the ways that I make money, it is not and will ever be Infinia. That ship has sailed. And if you get this article, you will see why. Okay, now, there's a black and white article written in a, a publication like this so many pages trust me that means more eyes are going to be looking at that model looking at that method of doing business and you may start to see some things change there are even some people long before this article came out because this is the most recent issue of entrepreneur magazine i have a friend that did um that did couponing because some of y'all like killer couponers right so y'all are getting the stuff for really 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 cheap i don't got time for the couponing I just pay full price. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not that good. But some of y'all are really good with the couponing. And so, um, what do you call it? I can only think of the word in Spanish. Sometimes it happens. Comestibles. Michael, who speaks Spanish on here? What's comestibles? Groceries. Groceries? So, groceries, that's a really big category on Amazon. But there was a friend of mine who was a couponer. And she said, even with... The coupon is she stopped selling on Amazon altogether because so many things have um, changed, not just in Amazon, but also in her or people are starting to crack down on everything, y'all. That's my point. I can't articulate it as well as she did. But basically, everything that glitters ain't gold. Except for me. Except for me. Me and my caramel skin. I'm I'm gold. No, I'm just like <laughs> Anyway, y'all, it's the middle of the day. I still have stuff to do. I'm about to meet up with Candace Boardroom Brown. We have to celebrate something. Um, and I will just talk to y'all later. D'Angelo, I love you, brother. We we are still was looking all sun kissing that picture. That was so cute. My mom was like, Who is this guy whose arm you leaning on? I was like, Mom, that's D'Angelo. Who is D'Angelo? I was like, Mom, that's like my brother. Okay. All right. Just watch how things <laughs> Watch how things come off on Facebook. I was like, Mom, oh my gosh. I was leaning on his arm. Not, <laughs> not all booed up with him. She was acting like he was my bae. But my bae in the next room, he over there. Probably like, I wish Kimberly would shut up talking so loud. <laughs> anyway, let me go. I'll talk to y'all later. Good, hey, uh, happy selling tea to those of y'all who are in TLC. Happy selling red bottles to those of you who are in Vita. And happy selling everything in the whole entire wide world to those of you who do retail arbitrage. All right? I'll talk to y'all later. Love everybody. <laughs>